There's simply no place like it on Earth, and we owe it so much. Without the Galapagos Islands and its unique wildlife, we'd still be living in the age of ignorance. We'd never have had Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, showing us how we became what we are today. These islands changed science forever, but now they're changing too. With so much history and so many wonders to see, it's a tourist mecca, and you know what that means. Fortunately, though, there's a band of scientists fighting the good fight to save the Galapagos. And after spending some time there, I can tell you it's a fight well worth winning. There they come. Look. Oh, look, look at that. that. <laughs> oh, straight out. Oh, wonderful. Look at them oh, coming down the front of the wave. Isn't that beautiful? Straight through. Excellent. Wonderful. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> It's a wonderful sight, sea lions having the time of their life in this natural playground, the Galapagos Islands. And when you get in the water with them, it's incredible. They have no fear, just complete curiosity. Above and below, my guide is Godfrey Merlin, who calls these islands home. And what he doesn't know about them, nobody does. few times there, they were rolling underneath me, those big eyes looking up, saying, almost saying, come and play, come on, let's get going. Godfrey's lived here longer than just about any other scientist on the planet. You know, when I first came to uh, Galapagos uh, 39 years ago, the people said, you know, why do you want to go to Galapagos? It's uh, the prisoners sea lions and bird shit. <laughs> well, you can see why I've stayed here. <laughs> I can see exactly Just why. Just incredible. That Absolutely proves them wrong. Wonderful. Just a beautiful experience. Beautiful experiences are easily found here in the Galapagos. A string of volcanic islands a thousand kilometres off Ecuador in South America. We followed massive sperm waves. This guy is just about to die. Bravo. But it's on land you find the true magic of the Galapagos. Here there are creatures found nowhere else. Giant tortoises roam volcanic rims. Huge land iguanas crunch razor-sharp cactus. And down on the shoreline, marine iguanas, the world's only seafaring lizard. It's also prehistoric looking, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Of course, Galapagos is a is a um, uh, known as a land of reptiles. Yeah. Uh, and the marine iguana is um, certainly a, a real symbol of uh, evolution in an isolated environment. They look as though they belong to the land before time. But these animals, these islands, forever change the modern world. Just imagine the amazement, the awe of the young British scientist Charles Darwin when he landed here in 1835 after an epic voyage aboard a ship called the Beagle. I think the voyage of the Beagle was much, much more important than the first moon landing. Darwin's step onto the Galapagos almost marked the moment when modern biology began. Charles Darwin. Chaz Darwin, Chaz Esquire. Darwin Esquire. It's our mate Chaz what got that one. <laughs> he done good, right? He done good. Professor Steve Jones and I are holding history in our hands. We're looking at the actual iguanas Darwin collected from the Galapagos. It's these specimens, now in London's Natural History Museum, that help forge Darwin's revolutionary theory of evolution through natural selection. Evolution is genetics plus time. Genetics, then mutations, then time. It's bound to happen. It can't not happen. You can see it happening around you. Darwin saw it happening on the Galapagos. 
So if you want to see the power of evolution, look around you. It's all here. It's all here. It's a cathedral of Darwinism. This gigantic blue whale here, this amazing creature, the biggest animal that's ever lived, is in fact a close relative of that hippopotamus. And they don't look at all similar, but only 60 or 70 million years ago, they were both descended from land mammals with sharp teeth about the size of dogs. This year marks the 150th anniversary of Charles Darwin's Origin of Species. It's the most radical book ever written because it declared all living creatures, including us, weren't created by God, but molded by nature. And it's those unique animals he discovered back on the Galapagos that first set Darwin on his trailblazing path. But now, Mother Nature's living laboratory is at risk. For millions of years, these islands and their animals had lived in glorious isolation, slowly evolving and surviving. Then along came humans. It took Charles Darwin four years to get here by sea. It took us just a couple of hours. And there's a long and ever-increasing queue of tourists lined up to come here and get their piece of the Galapagos. And that's the big problem. There's been a population explosion of people on the Galapagos who come and service the tourist industry. And of course, that's destroying the very things that the uh, tourists come to see. I and mean, as they say, every man kills the thing he loves. And that's happening on the Galapagos. Last year, 173,000 tourists came to these islands. But that figure will soon double with massive expansions planned for the airport. The townships of Galapagos are also experiencing a development boom and now look nothing like the sleepy villages where scientist Felipe Cruz played as a boy. I think that the islands are at risk and that's also another thing that the world has to understand, that the islands and islands like Galapagos are and will be at risk forever. So now, just by you arriving here, there is a risk of you bringing something that might be damaging to these islands. So with the people come the pests, and it's an invasion. Rats, cats, goats, diseases, bugs and weeds. So on the list of problems for these islands, where does the blackberry rate? To me, I think it's actually the most serious problem and it's an emergency and we need to do something about it for now. Australian scientist Dr Mark Gardner must have one of the best but most challenging jobs on the planet. As scientific director for the Charles Darwin Foundation, his specialty is invasive species and defeating them, like this thorny blackberry bush. It could really strangle the islands. Oh, it, it is. It is strangling the islands at the moment. It, and, and I think everyone's realised now. And, it's, it's meant now moving so fast, it's jumping to uninhabited islands because there's birds can fly. Yeah. And that makes it even a more serious problem. Then there's pests like the tropical fire ant and its smaller cousin, the little fire ant, that are starting to swarm. It's got quite a few of them yeah, there, there'd be it? about two or three hundred ants in there. Yeah. So you're telling me that tiny, tiny ant it's, it's such a big problem. It's changing the ecosystem of Galapagos. And if this gets on a lot of uninhabited islands, we'll see loss of lots of biodiversity. But Mark also has a much more personal commitment to the Galapagos. He's raising his family here. Shall we go and buy some fish? Wife Mandy is also a scientist, and daughter Molly seems bound to become one. Yeah, leaves right. and grass and flowers. Like these flowers. Do you think he's had his breakfast this morning? Yep. Yeah. It's an extraordinary backyard for young Molly to explore. Hey, do you remember that really big one that lives on the other side? Yeah. This big, Mummy? Even bigger, I reckon. I reckon it's that big. Wow, That's bigger huge. Bigger than you, bigger than me even. The 
They're like a tank, aren't they? Yeah, a tank or a Volkswagen. That's how I <laughs> refer to them. The giant tortoises of Galapagos really do symbolise evolution at work. Each island has a different species with distinctive shell shape and neck size adapted to the sort of vegetation they eat. But they were nearly wiped out by, of all things, goats, which were left behind by sailors to breed out of control. Feral populations were stripping the islands bare. Of all the incredible wildlife on the Galapagos, this fella is the most unique, the most special, but unfortunately for all the wrong reasons. Meet Lonesome George. Believe it or not, he's about a hundred years old and he's living out his final years in this safe and secure reserve. Because you see, on the island of Pinta, where George comes from, there are no more like him. He's it, the last of his species. And when George goes, his type of giant tortoise will become extinct. To save other species of tortoise from the same fate as Lonesome George, war has been declared on goats. It's brutally effective. Over the past few years, more than 150,000 goats have been eradicated. That must have seen an almost impossible task. It was an impossible task. Uh, I have some of the Older scientists, they were betting with me, saying, no, you won't get rid of the goats, no? And I was, no, we will get rid of the goats, you know? And you um, did? And we did it, yes. But history is now against the Galapagos. Although 95% of the islands are national park, vermin don't respect these boundaries. Which is why the people battling to save the Galapagos want to put the brakes on tourism and channel more resources into pest control and quarantine. There are lots and lots of people out there, very dedicated people and very able people, trying to save the Galapagos. But they're basically, it's a candle, it's a candle in a hurricane, I think. There is an inevitability of what's happening today. Can you save the Galapagos? Absolutely. If you want to keep it like a snapshot, a, a photo in history, no, you can't save it. But if you do want to um, you know, have a functioning ecosystem with the majority of its biodiversity, I think that's possible. Godfrey Merlin took me right to the edges of this wild archipelago. These islands and their amazing wildlife changed the course of human history but now humans are changing the course of the islands. We've invaded Galapagos. Now, we have to save it. But it depends, it depends on the will of human beings. You've got some hope though. I have some hope, yes. But it just depends whether, whether we have the force of character as a, as a species hmm. to say, that's enough, we're going to put it right now. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.